Hi guys, it's Gav here from danceplanet.tv. Thanks for joining me as always. And in today's video, I've got the awesome Robbie Congreen on. So I'm smiling from ear to ear. Thank you for joining me today, Robbie. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Just trying to get rid of this Facebook message. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get stuff like that all the while. There's always stuff when I'm doing videos that pop up on the screen and I have to close this down and close that. So I put the do not disturb on there now. Normally works. Yeah, never well to do that. So how are you anyway? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Obviously waiting, more. so obviously um, you're waiting for your knee operation to go in, um, to be done shortly? Yeah, well, that's the plan. Um, it should have been done in December, but they put it back because my blood sugars were too high. Okay. Um, and then they, they said March, which I couldn't do anyway because the season started, so I was aiming for July. I got a letter back off them yesterday saying the referral was too soon after the last referral, so it looks like I've got to hang on a little bit. God, it must be so frustrating for you, obviously, yeah. missing a lot yeah. of the events and different things as well. Yeah, it, it's it's not just a dart, it's an everyday life in effect, so yeah, it's doing me head in a bit like... So where, have you got a time scale when you think it's going to be sorted then, or is it just a... Uh, well, I, I was hoping to struggle on till July and get it done then, but honestly don't know no. now. I need to go back, see my doctor and get him to get onto them and see what's going on. How much does that affect your ranking and everything then, Robbie? Obviously missing all these tournaments to get yeah. yourself in a good position and then and then have to battle with this on top. Yeah, I'm so I'm still doing the tournaments. The problem is I'm not doing very well in them because I can hardly walk. So right. it's, it's my standing leg as well, so it, it really doesn't help matters. I played last Wednesday, um, 24 legs, because we play in this league, and I won 6-0, 6-0, 6-0, um, four games. But the next day, I, I couldn't walk. I couldn't no. walk for two days after it, so... No, it's a killer, isn't it? It's... E even general practice, I can only do 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, because I can't stand for long periods. So I don't have the lads coming to the house anymore to practice, because it's not fair on them no it's a practice with me and then you know me not being able to do it so i don't think a lot of people probably realize as well how much of an impact who don't play darts or just watch it on telly you know when you see a dart player and they say oh they've got a problem with the shoulder or the knee or the elbow and people sort of think oh, it can't really make that much difference but it's huge isn't it yeah i mean i i first on my knee when i was 15 playing football so that's how long i've actually uh lived with it i've had seven operations on it in the oh, past yeah. so yeah. It, it's it's now at the point where it's just crumbling the bones misshaped uh, i've got no ligaments left intact so the the whole knee just slips oh god must be uh, because the bones misshaped off wear and tear over the years yeah it's just and things it, it i mean i can get up out of bed in the morning and struggle walking anyway but I, could, I was in Tesco with the missus shopping a couple of weeks ago, and only for having an hold of the trolley, I had a fell. So it, it's God, yeah. The thing is, it gives you you can't you can't focus on something that you that you want to do when you're in that much pain either, can you? It's just no, you just can't do it. Yeah. It's your mind's on other things, isn't it? Yeah, I mean the problem as well. The painkillers I'm on, I can't take them when I'm playing because they make me drowsy, yeah. they make me really sleepy. So they would. It would affect my game, so I have to play without the pain killers. And then, uh, obviously, you're playing in a lot of pain, so yeah. it's it's a, it's a no win win thing. It's just horrible. Uh, well, fingers crossed for you that it gets sorted uh, sooner rather than later and get back to normal. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. yeah. We'll see yeah, how it goes. So, so. so, what what would you say um, is your best moment in darts? Um, probably playing for England. Yeah. Um, and I know from, from like a, a personal point of view, pro, playing for England was a big. Well, that's the, uh, that's the pinnacle of any England. sport, when, isn't it? When, it's, a, it's got to be the pinnacle, yeah, isn't when, it? When you're playing, obviously your county and all that sort of stuff, super leagues, that's as high as you can go to get picked for your country. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And I know it's not how it used to be anymore, but because obviously there's a lot of great players who aren't playing international darts because they're playing in the PDC but it's still 
regardless of that, it's still an achievement to play That's for your country. It's a privilege, isn't it? It's, you know, I, it's, it's one thing that, like, I'd lost my mum and dad before I got paid to, to play for England. So it was one of those things that I would have loved them to have seen. Seen, yeah. Such you know, a... So. Wow, I just can't, I can't imagine what it must be like to be because I'm I'm not good at anything really, but to be good at something that you love doing and to represent your country, um, I'm football mad as well. It just it just must be the the, the biggest buzz of all. I, I I can't imagine it can ever be beaten really in in terms of sport. It's yeah it, it, yeah, that's just given me a lot of things that I never thought I'd have and it's kept me out of a lot of trouble over the years. So <laughs> yeah. I've got a lot to thank the sport for really. So, um, are you a big practicer of a game? Obviously, I know you said about your knee at the moment, but are you a big practicer of a game um, as, a, as a rule? And, and if so, do you practice doubles or you score more? What do you concentrate on? Yeah, both, to be honest. I not only do finishing uh, from 81 up to 120. Um, religiously, I do that every day. Yeah. Uh, and obviously just scoring, working on 20s, 19s, 18s. Um, I used to be able to practice like three, four hours at a time, but now, like I say, it's just pinching ten minutes here, ten minutes there, and yeah, when you can, yeah, as long as I can, I can, and until I feel it, because the problem is, if I practice, if I overdo it, my knee just swells right up, and, and I can't bend my leg for a couple of days, so I've got to sort of time it. Right, and that. Have you used things in? Um, I know a lot of people speak about, and Chris Mason do about, like the treble train and that. Do you do you yeah, use any things yeah. like that, or? Yeah, I've got I've got a treble train. Uh, the lad who does them sent me one out to try out. So yeah, I think it's brilliant. It's yeah. great for a bit of fun. <laughs> yeah, and it gets you grouping together as well. It, I mean, and I've, I've seen bad comments about it, but. To be honest, I, I think anything to catch it on the dark or can only be a good thing. Yeah, definitely. It's great for kids, I think, as well. Yeah, like I say, because in there sort of different size segments on some of them, so you can sort of have like starter ones and then and then go down to like um, like just the trebles and, and they gradually get smaller. Or am I on about? Some, I heard somebody speak about different level yeah, ones. On this, I think that might be uh, on the rings. On the rings, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Eric Bristow does a like a ring segment thing, doesn't he? Which is slightly different to this. This is like a, a foam that you put on your yeah. actually on barboard. Yeah. Um and there's it comes with the segment. That's well. right, yeah. It, so you, I mean you, you can you don't have to have the segment just on the twenties if you want to work on your eighteens, nineteens, whatever. You know You just yeah, just work on a specific segment. Which is good. I never have to practice on double one because that's why I end up on every game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm always in the madhouse. I always say I'm the best 26 hitter in the world. Honestly, I'm all over the shop. I really yeah, am. That's as long as you're hitting at the end. <laughs> oh, I'm just all over. So the other thing I wanted to ask is if you're when you see a draw come out and you're drawn with somebody maybe like Michael Van Gogh or Peter Wright or somebody like that, do you prepare different? when you're going to play them to what you would another player or is it the yeah. same for everyone? Yeah, play the same, play your own game. It, it, it's no good me trying to change things in my game because that, that's going to help them, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Because a lot you, of... You're, what, what you're doing is your own thing. Yeah. What, you know, what, what's got you to where you are to play those players. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I would never change my game for anybody. No. It was really interesting because a lot of people say that um, always play the dartboard. But when I was watching the um, European darts open over the weekend, I heard one of the commentators, I don't know whether it was Paul Nicholson or one of them, said that James Wade's a player that tends to play the player that he needs to in front of him as opposed to the dartboard. And he, he always... And is it, you know, do like, some... When you when say play the board, it's like a little switch that clicks. Right. And... Um, you're just so tunnel vision that you don't even realise what the other player is doing. Right. You're just focusing purely on the dark board and what you're scoring and what you're leaving. Yeah. When you get in that zone, it's fantastic. I think that's what Michael. That's a little zone that Michael Van Gerwen gets into all the time. Is it? It must be really difficult though to get in that zone, and it will be when you've got the cameras yeah. and the crowd, and you know the other person's already maybe in that zone. To get in it yourself yeah. must be so difficult, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, 
Do you say about the noisy PDC crowds? But I think sometimes that helps the players. Yeah, it's it's, it's better playing in loud atmosphere like that than when when you go to Lakeside. I think that's why not many you, you don't see many like nine darters at Lakeside because yeah. the crowd you could hear a, a fly fart at the back of the room. Yeah, yes. you know what I mean. And, and that I think. <laughs> I think that translates to the player and it, it makes the player a little bit more nervy. Whereas when they're on stage in the PDC and you've got the crowd giving it bananas behind you, yeah. <laughs> then you, 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 you just uh, get with it. I think that probably showed a little bit this year in the UK Open, didn't it? I don't think that a lot of the players performed at um, you know at Butlins recently without the crowd there as they would have done. I think a few of them missed it, didn't they? Yeah, I think it's just um, obviously something different for them. And, yeah. I mean, the seeds went out, you know. All over um, the place, didn't they? Yeah. But, so what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I like it. That's If I'm being honest, I think that's probably one of my favourite. So I like the fact, it's a bit like, that. you know, it is like the FA Cup of Darts, isn't it? You see the little teams come in at football, do well, get an opportunity. And like that young guy, is it Rafferty who beat White? Um, Peter Wright, 10-9, was that? Nathan Rafferty, yeah. Absolutely, you know, where did that come from? But then you hear other people saying, this kid is really good. But a lot of us that only see the big tournaments don't sit, you know, see a lot of these other talent coming through, do we? Yeah, I mean, on the Pro Tour, obviously, you've got 128 players. So, the, yes, the best artists are always on the Pro Tour. You should see, I mean, you could go around any of the boards and it's all fantastic darts. And, obviously, once you go onto the TV... A player might not perform, they might go and perform brilliance, but you know, it, those players who are doing it consistently and doing it time after time after time, playing on the TV, they, yeah. they're gaining the experience. Yeah. So <clears throat> some players are only going to maybe play on TV at the UK Open. Yeah. So they have to grab their chance while they can. Yeah, well, that, um, what's his name? We've got to the um, Hogan again. He was absolutely... Him in the UK are just... Every year he seems to do well. He turns up Paul Hogan, doesn't he? Um, Paul Hogan is probably one of the most underrated dark oh, players I know. He's brilliant. I remember practising with him uh, one year at Lakeside. He passed me. Oh, I, went, I, went, I went out to a, a place where he plays darts and he bashed me. Did he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of the darts were yeah. just... Incredible, and I think this guy just once a year come along in the UK Open, always a Raleigh's qualifier again, weren't he? Unbelievable. Yeah, play or very underrated. Unbelievable. So, leading on to that then, what advice would you, you know, for the youngsters, what, what would you give to them coming into the game of darts now? Starting out. Don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't it? drink. Uh, listen and learn as much as you can. And try and be like a sponge and soak it all in as quickly quickly as you can. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of good young players that Bradley Brooks, uh, Callum Luce, who were up from my neck of the woods in the yeah. northwest. There's some brilliant players coming through now, and um, it's becoming a young man's game, really, mm. when you look around. Oh, God, yeah, there's so many coming yeah. through, isn't there? Yeah, but <clears throat> they come in and They've got no battle scars and they've shown no fear and that's that's good. It's only going to get better. Yeah, they don't care who's in front of them, do they? They're just like, they just give it their all. They don't care about the name, who it is, this is who we are and, and, and just... And that's the way to be. They're, it's it's just a different mentality now to what it was years ago and the opportunities there a lot more. You guys, when you started, I don't know, when you said how many, 20, how many years have you been, been, been doing the darts now? Uh 28 years. See, you know, it's it must have been... There, there was nowhere near as many tournaments, was there? Everything obviously mattered more to, to, to earn the money when you could. I, I didn't really take it serious. It was just... A, it was just a day... Because I, I'd obviously done me in. I couldn't play football anymore. And I started playing darts. Nice. So... I didn't, I didn't really like darts. <laughs> 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 Absolutely brilliant. Um, moving on from that, uh, who, 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 who's your best friends on the tour? Who do you hang about with most, or, or partner up with, or, or whatever? On the tour, on our table, we don't. There's normally uh, myself, uh, Alan Norris, Peter Wright, uh, Simon Preston, who he lost the tour card last year, but he's doing well. Challenge tour this year, and he's he, he, uh, he was. I seen him in Milton Keynes the other week, so. 
yeah, it's normally us. Brilliant. Start on a big table with obviously our family and friends and guests. No, I bet it's the right laugh, isn't it? I can imagine. I bet you have some yeah. giggles, don't you? Yeah, we have, yeah, it's a good laugh, like. Um, normally all passing cream round to each other for our ailments and <laughs> Joanne with her little bag of uh, goodies, what she brings, so, yeah. yeah My okay. missus brings butties and fruits and stuff for us, so, <laughs> yeah, we have a bit of a picnic as well. <laughs> oh, why not? That sounds amazing. How many nine darts have you hit in your career? Not, not, not like just on, obviously... Um, in total, like in practice and everything, is it something that you do? Uh, I honestly don't know. I've done quite a few, like um, I've hit a few in tournaments, but yeah, I've never bothered counting to no. be honest because I lost count so long time ago. <laughs> That must be must be an awesome position to be in. I'm one of more like 50 darts. Um, what I also want to do, Rob, is I know that you do a lot of exhibitions and different things. Can can we maybe chat a little bit about them and how you do them and, and stuff like that and if, the best way for people to get tickets at the ones you go to or, or do? Uh, yeah, I've got, I've got some... Uh, one in May, but that's a university gig. Uh, beginning of May, 5th of May, I think it is. Yeah. Blancaster University. Uh, oh, May the fourth. May the fourth be with you. May the fourth. Yeah, I love that. I love it. a bit yeah. of Jedi in there. A bit of Jedi. Yeah. Uh, and then I've got a couple in. I've got one in Darlington, uh, one in Durham, and one in Halifax. They're uh, three days on the run. Oh, the Durham one first. I think the second of June. Um, Remember, guys, to put these dates, anybody that's watching this, remember to get these dates in the diary if you want to see. Robbie, because I know that you promote them through Twitter as well, don't you, quite heavily? Yeah, yeah, I'm on Twitter quite a bit, yeah. I will, I will put all these up. Um, I've just got to go through the Mrs. Diary to see what's what. I should have wrote them down, really, before I came on, but... No, that's yeah. OK. I'll tell you what, Robbie, if you, get, um, if you send the messages to me at the end, I will put all the details in the description for anybody that's interested with any links that you want, actually, in this video. Yeah, cool. I'll do yeah. that, and then I'll just make it easy for people with all the dates and everything. So, guys, anybody that's interested, you'll find all the links and the information for all uh, Robbie's exhibitions in here as I well. The book one, sounds good and such. Who's that, Sorry? And if anyone wants to book an exhibition, so I'm just getting in touch with Yeah, can, we put, can you send me your details as well so that we can put it on no, there if they want to get in yeah. touch? Yeah, no worries. We'll add that all in. Um, and just before we go, I know you're a massive Liverpool fan. They're doing well this season. Third, happy? Um, ish. Crabby <laughs> top. <laughs> we, don't, we don't play for second or third, do we? Only winning matters, but... Yeah, oh. it's... It, it, it it's a step in the right direction, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And Salah's just... Salah is unbelievable, isn't he? It's... Um, I think Chelsea must look and, and think, you know, obviously, he was with him, what, a season? And then, and then yeah, let him go. I mean, Crazy. Yeah, I Salah. I'd argue the owner's going to want to sell him in the summer. That is the problem, isn't it? That is... Can you see him going, or do you think he will be there next year? I honestly don't know. I didn't think Coutinho would go. No. And, um, he sold him from under us, but I suppose if uh, the money comes in for them, they, they might look at it as a good investment on yeah. the days you want to really pay for them. Yeah. Uh, I'd be heartbroken if he goes because it what? just shows that we can't keep hold of our decent players. Yeah, it, I think that is the problem, isn't it? It's Real Madrid and that. They just seem to, um, you know, buy them. Paris Saint-Germain, Saint 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 the money they've got is just insane, isn't it? It's, it's, you just can't pay the same. And what about all it like? I know we're going off darts a little bit now, but um, you know these some of these Chinese teams are they trying to get that cap? Did I hear now because it's some of the wages and um, that they're trying to pay have just gone into ridiculous amounts. They're trying to yeah, get a cap I mean, on it, aren't they? Can you imagine what uh, even Brembridge, whatever his name was, the Zoltan? Yeah. Do you know how much he's getting playing for LA Galaxy now? And he'll probably only play three games for them. How much is he getting? I oh, know, I didn't hear. It's good. I don't know what it is. Oh, right. it's I, been insane amounts. It's going to be astronomical. Yeah, it's, it's... The problem is you just can't compete with... You know, there's a lot of players that... Um, um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head now, but I've gone over to China, but probably aren't our leading stars, and that are making absolute... You can't... I don't suppose you can blame them for going, really, when they get the opportunity, can you? Yeah, it, 
back to it's a business, isn't it? It's a business. It they is. just go over there. They finish their career here in the Premiership or France or Spain. That's the next step, isn't it? Over to China. Yeah. And then grab next a few millions to stick in the bank before they retire. Can't you blame to, I think the problem is a lot of them that um, go over, like English players, like a lot of ours never make it when they go abroad to a high level, do they? Like obviously Gareth Bale's done wonders, isn't he? But there's loads yeah. of overs over the years that have gone and, and played over in different countries and they never sort of cut the mustard, do they? Yeah, I think the English style of play isn't for everyone either. No. You know, it's. I'd say the German German leagues probably the closest you get to English football yeah, on the continent. You know, yeah, Spanish yeah. definitely isn't, is it? It's it's totally different. Isn't uh, it? It, yeah, it's it's like the Italian football, completely different. Yeah. I mean, England are playing Italy tonight, so we'll see how we fare against them. But yeah, very. Uh, it's like a game of chess for them. Yeah, we're we're a little bit more gung ho. We have got better over the years, but you know, it'll be interesting to see what. How England get on tonight? Actually, yeah. Game yeah, after us beating Holland the other night. Yeah, I thought things were very poor to be honest. Yeah, well, they ain't even made it to the World Cup or anything, have they? No, but, but the people, I mean, it was three, three nil up against Portugal at half yeah. time the other night. So what's going on with that? Don't make sense. You can never get your head round it, can you? The more you try and work it out, or you think somebody's going to do something, do something totally different. It's 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 just yeah. crazy, isn't it? It's a bit like trying to predict the darts in the Premier League. Um, I've got my oh. oh guys, I've got my Premier League prediction show coming out tomorrow night. By the way, it's every week. I think yeah, and I'm totally off every single week. It's, it's, it's... I look forward to Thursday nights on Facebook, watching everyone putting up oh. and watch the boss because of a draw or whatever. It's always one result that's thrown up that. Is unexpected in the Premier League. I think that's that's the joy of it. Yeah, and also yeah. you always yeah, like yeah. you know that that match that certain person's going to hit at least X amount of one eighties, and then they go and get one. Or uh, it's just it's just so difficult to predict. I'm mean, not anybody that's watching. When I do my prediction shows. I say do the opposite because I'm normally totally wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, I don't bother with any of the prediction things, and I'm obviously I'm not allowed to bet on it. So yeah. Yeah, I've had my fingers burned with that once before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a, I just do it as a bit of fun, really. But listen, Robbie, I just want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so grateful of your time and chatting to me today. Yeah, no problem. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, also, to all you guys that have uh, watched the show today with Robbie, I hope that you have enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out Darts Planet TV. Um, this video will be on there. Um, as always, there's loads of the other awesome dart videos being imported from YouTube, so do check out dartsplanet.tv. Also, the prediction show, as I just said, for the um, Premier League will be out tomorrow night. If you do like the channel, don't forget to leave a big like, um, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.